Hello, I'm Jennifer Snyder for Blitzy. Today I'm going to take some nesting boxes and turn them into a decorative tabletop cake. You can use this for any occasion, for weddings, for bridal showers, birthday parties, or just a get together. Dewcraft's nesting boxes come in three sizes, small, medium, and large. You can paint them or stain them, but I chose to leave them in their natural color and add a bit of patterned paper for decoration. If you cover the entire side of the box with patterned paper, your lid won't fit on the box. So I used a pencil to mark where I need to put the patterned paper. Now I know exactly how much of the box to leave bare. From there, I can cut my strips of paper and glue them to the box. I'll follow the same process for each of the boxes. Now I'm taking the Comfort Craft tool and I'm going to smooth out the bottom of each box. This tool is great for refining and giving a finished look to your project. It's time to cut some tops, so I'll use the boxes as my pattern. I prefer to cut the circle smaller than the pattern, leaving a little edge on my box showing. I find this makes for a cleaner look instead of trying to make the circle fit the top of the box. It's difficult to get a perfect fit, so why fight it? It's time to decorate the boxes, so I'm adding a different ribbon or lace to the lids of each box. The variety will provide texture to the project. As I move on, I need to define the back of my box. This is where my seams will meet. I'm adding some decorative cording to the base layer of my cake, and I'm adding a matching bow to the middle layer of the cake, right over the seam. I'm keeping the embellishments on the bottom layer of the cake quite simple. I'm going to tie a canvas star to the cake using some hemp cord, and adorn it with some mini wooden clothespins. I'm actually going to take the hemp cord and string it through the eyelet on the star form, this way, it'll keep the star in place when I tie it onto the box. It won't slide around. I'm going to finish up by clipping a clothespin onto the star. This box is done. The middle box is going to be adorned with some string pearls. I'm also going to add a flower to the front of the box. I want to be careful where I place the flower so that it doesn't interfere with opening and closing of the box. Moving on, it's time to finish the top layer of the cake. I have a beautiful die from Spellbinders that I'm going to use as the base of my floral cluster. To build up my cluster, I'm going to start with some floral berries and add some flowers. Once I'm satisfied with my flowers, I'm going to accent the box with some liquid pearls. Liquid pearls are wonderful because they add a soft, elegant touch of dimension to any project. I'm adding dots to the top and dots along the bottom. This will emulate the pearls that I've used in my trim. I've decided on a few last minute embellishments. I'm going to tuck a couple of these pine punches behind my flower to fill it out a little bit. Then I'm going to take a journal card, cut it in half, and tuck those on either side of the flower as well. I felt something was missing and I wanted to add a bit more interest to the flower. I also saw a cute journal sentiment that I thought would be great on the top of the cake. You can imagine how versatile this cake is for any celebration. Wouldn't it look wonderful as a centerpiece? And the really cool part, each layer is still a functioning box, so you can fill in with goodies and surprises. I left my layers separate so they could be taken apart, but if you prefer, you can glue yours together so it stays in cake shape permanently. I'm Jennifer Snyder for Blitzy. I thank you for watching and stop by Blitzy every day for your favorite products at discount prices.